Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Called Wild, and as you guys can see right here, we are on a brand new account, and I have yet to even hit the new game button. So, we're going to be starting a completely brand new account here on the Hunter Called Wild and doing a beginner series. You guys have been requesting something like this for a very long time, and though we've done a few things similar in the past, like the Hardcore series, we've never done a true beginner series. So, I figured we are going to do a beginner series now, and I will pass on as much knowledge knowledge as I possibly can to you guys and just try to help you in every possible aspect of the game and there's quite a bit to go through at every stage of the game so we will get into it shortly but I did want to real quickly mention a few things the first thing is normally today we would have our weekly highlights video where we show off all of the stuff that we got while we were trying to hunt for the weekly species which this week it was the Ronda Ibex but instead what I'm gonna do is from now on on Monday whenever we spin for the new species I'm also gonna show the highlights so we'll just kind of jam that into one video so that I can make room for this new beginner series and then I also want to clear up a couple misconceptions that people have about the game when you don't have any DLC so a lot of people think that you have to own a map in order to be able to play it and that's not actually true you can play any map in the game provided you have access to multiplayer if you join a multiplayer server on a map that you don't own you can still play on it for absolutely free without even having to purchase the DLC so if there's a map that you guys want to try out or that might be better for starting out on then you can do it as long as it's in multiplayer the only downside is the fact that you cannot uh, stay on the map if the host leaves. That's the only downside. Uh, if there's nobody in the session that owns the map, then it will close down in like five minutes, but then you can just go find a new map anyway. But I think without any further ado, let's go ahead and press new game and get this beginner series started. I am extremely excited to do this. I will probably cut out most of that intro dialogue because we have heard it many, many times, and I know most of you have too. But let's go ahead and take out our first animal of this account. And anytime that you spawn in, you'll probably be starting on either Leighton Lake or Hirschfelden unless you've bought some DLC. And there will be a blacktail deer waiting for you right here. Or is it a white tail? I actually don't remember. I think I think that's actually a white tail. Uh, but either way, there'll be a deer waiting for you. One of the things you don't want to do is shoot it front on because you do have soft point ammunition in your 243 when you start out. So you want to make sure you get a clear broadside shot like this one. And because we took that broadside shot and didn't try to do a frontal shot, we did hit vital organs, which means she will not have ran far at all. And we should probably change the track color. This orange doesn't really show up too well on Leighton Lakes. There we go. That is much better. A nice bright pink. So this is the first kill of this account. And it is a white tailed deer female. 40 kgs. I think that's actually minimum weight. So that's about as low as it gets with uh, 458 cash resulting from that kill. Now when you first start up a brand new account, you are going to have absolutely nothing revealed or unlocked on your map, and it'll be up to you to travel the map and discover everything. And the first thing you'll want to discover is this lookout tower that is just north of where you spawn. It's about 400 meters away. You can kind of see it off in the distance right there. You're going to want to go up there and unlock it as soon as possible because it will reveal some of the outposts in the area, and it'll also reveal stuff like uh, points of interest and things like that that are going to be very useful for getting experience and hunting down your trophies. Once you get to the top of the lookout, you will see an option to survey when you're looking at this little map right here. And when you press survey, it will give you kind of an overview of the area. And now that we have clicked on survey, we can now see all of this area around here. These are all different undiscovered points of interest that can be anything from hunting stands to a uh, little information about the reserve. And then we also have the outposts, and we're going to be heading down to this outpost because it is the closest one. Now, a lot of you that watch the channel probably already know a lot of this stuff, but because of the fact that this is a beginner series style of uh, series, I do want to point out as many things as I can that a new player might not know. And uh, one of the most important things when you first start out is going to be unlocking all of your outposts. We revealed them with that lookout tower, and now that we're here, we can claim it by pressing E on this little pole right here outside of the outpost. And then all of the uh, lockers and stuff like that will appear around. And then once they do, you can go over to the locker 
and select your gear. Now this is going to have the store where you'll have pretty much everything that you can buy. If you have purchased DLC, those weapons will also show up in here and they'll be free of charge. Won't actually cost you anything besides purchasing the ammo. Uh, for the sake of trying to make this helpful for people that don't necessarily have enough money to buy the DLC, we're going to try and minimize the use of it as much as possible, at least for the first few episodes so you guys can kind of get an idea of how I unlock things and the types of hunting that I will do with basically just the vanilla default stuff that you get when you purchase the game. And a couple of the first things you'll want to try and get is the 243 polymer tips, which is only 50 rifle score. You obtain rifle score by killing animals using rifles, so just use your rifle as much as possible when you first start out, and you will slowly gain rifle score, which will lead you towards poly tip bullets, and also the other item that's going to be incredibly helpful, which is the Hyperion scope which requires 900 rifle score and that's roughly like 20 kills give or take a few so it does take a little bit to get but it is well worth it but since we have only killed one thing and are pretty broke we're gonna go ahead and just get a bunch of the free soft point ammo for the 243 and one thing that pretty much everybody should have as far as I know is the 270 Stradivarius and that is because this is an item that we actually got by completing a challenge a couple years ago and as far as I know every account gets this no matter what so we're gonna go ahead and use that also but it is gonna take a little bit of time to work up towards the ammo for it so we are gonna have to do a little bit of grinding with the 243 before we can really get that. And since you do actually get the tents and ATVs, with the base game for console, we'll go ahead and use these. On PC, you would have to purchase the tents and the uh, ground blinds and the ATV separately, but uh, for some reason on console, they made it so it's bundled with the base game. So we'll go ahead and bring a tent with us also, since the majority of you will probably have access to them. So since we do have a little bit of money from killing that doe, we are going to reset the time because currently at the time of 11.56, there's not really a lot that we can take with the 243 that's going to be at their drink zones. And drink zones are the best way to hunt everything in the game. So what you're going to want to do is I would personally switch to Blacktail Drink Time, which is 16.30 on PC. If I'm not mistaken, it might actually be 17.30, but I'm pretty sure it's 16.30. If you're playing on console before the Rancho Del Arroyo release, then it will be I believe 5 30 in the morning but because Rancho Del Arroyo is already out on PC we have the latent rework which changed a bunch of the need zone times so for us it's going to be 16 32 if I'm not mistaken so we're just going to switch the time and that should make it so the black tailed deer are drinking near water and we'll be able to find quite a few of them just by following the Belmont area around here so when you first start your brand new account, you're probably going to want to take out every single animal that you see. Now normally I would just prioritize the males because they are the ones that are going to potentially respawn as diamonds or uh, male rares. You don't really want to shoot females once you get going, but at the start you need every bit of money you can possibly get, so you want to make sure you take out you pretty much bearings. every animal. Now on pretty much every animal in the game, you are going to want to aim right at the crease in the shoulder in order to get the vitals. As you guys can see, we aimed about there and it hit the left lung of this black tailed deer. And lung shots and heart shots are going to be your best bet in almost every scenario. It will get them down the quickest and it'll help you achieve full score, which as you can see right here is using the proper ammo for an animal, shooting it two times or less, keeping the trophy organ intact and hitting one vital organ or more, which the trophy organ will be stated right here. And on most animals, the trophy organ is the head. So you never want to headshot or brain shot anything that you come across because it will in most cases ruin the trophy. Since this is a doe, it doesn't actually have a trophy organ, but if it's a buck or something like a bear or a cape buffalo then you're not going to want to go for a headshot because it will ruin everything and as you can see this doe right here gave us 765 cash now this number will climb as you get more consecutive harvest bonus which just means harvesting a bunch of animals in a row without uh failing to pick up any of them and this will affect your cash a little bit but it's not a huge amount but now that we have took her out, we will have our first skill point and the skill points and perk points are going to be very important 
because there's a lot of really useful stuff that you can unlock with him. And the first one that we're going to do is actually in the stalker category, and that is the locate tracks skill. And the reason that we're going to get this is because there's a lot of them down the line that are going to be very useful. Like soft feed is going to make us walk quieter through stuff like foliage, grass, leaves, larger vegetation, bushes, shrubs, stuff like that. Improvised blind is also going to be something we need to work towards because it makes it so you can actually hide in the bushes and animals won't notice that you're there. Uh, innate triangulation is a decent one to get. It kind of helps with uh, vocalizations when an animal is calling. It kind of narrows down the direction that they're in. Um, another one that's pretty good to get is I'm only happy when it rains. You want to get both of these. Extremely useful. Same with track knowledge because it'll give you more information about the tracks that you pick up. And we will kind of go over the skills and perks as we unlock them, but that's kind of a basic rundown of what I'm going to try and work towards for the skills. We've actually got another deer out there along with a couple black bear. Uh, we're actually going to try and take one of these bear down, even though the 243 is too low of a class for them because they actually do give a decent bit of cash and XP, and that's something we definitely need right now, and this is actually going to be perfect right here. But this is kind of the path that we have taken. We ran up to this out, uh, lookout point right here, ran down to this outpost, and now we're just kind of going north, northeast, and then we will probably cut a little bit more towards northwest and follow this water. But while we have the chance, let's go ahead and take that bear out, and if we can, we'll get that doe right after two. And actually, this bear is going to run right at us, so this is actually going to work out pretty good, I would say. See if we can quickly, and yeah, there's no way. So this bear right here, I'm actually not sure if it's going to die. Um, it says very low bleed rate. I don't even know if we had vitals, to be honest. There's actually a lot of deer in this area. There's a bunch of white tail deer, and then we got the black tail. Uh, this is definitely going to be a good area for some XP. And uh, let's real quickly go up and see if we did get vitals on this bear. Um, it's not looking great. Not looking great so far at all. And yeah, we didn't hit an organ. In this case, I'm not going to chase it. It's just going to waste so much time trying to take it down because the soft point ammo is not super good at penetrating on something like a bear. So if you don't get it the first time, it's really not worth chasing after. At least not early on when you have weak guns like we do currently. So instead, what we're going to do is sneak up on these white tail deer and try to take a couple of them out because they're going to be much easier to take with the 243 and we'll still give a decent amount of cash, especially if we can get a couple of them. This buck is now extremely close to us. And I think we're going to let it get a little bit closer, so we will go prone. And now it's actually in the perfect spot. We want to make sure it's broadside. And this is going to do the trick right here. Let's move to get it to stop. And then take the shot on it. There's one more behind it. Actually, it was two, but we managed to hit that doe. I don't think that other buck was going to be a good idea to try and shoot. Most likely would not have got vitals, but on that doe, we did end up getting the vitals. Now, one thing you could try to do here is as they're going away, try to hit them in the back of the neck. Which sometimes works out. Unfortunately, we didn't nail the shot there, but it is worth a shot anytime you get the chance. The biggest thing to make sure is if you have, like, a max level animal, don't be shooting it in the back of the head and uh, for something like a white tail, the max level is 3 on most other species. Max level is either 5 or 9. Uh, but for the white tail, it's 3 for some reason. But there we have a left lung shot on that white tail deer. 672 cash. And then we got this other one down over here. Got lung shots on both of them as far as I know. And yeah, we got left lung on that one. So that's going to bring us up to just over 3,000 cash. And we should be able to get the 243 polymer tips now which is going to greatly increase our success rate on some of these harder shots. And while we're over here, let's go ahead and grab this second outpost right here. This is a pretty good one when you first start out because there's a lot of animals around this area as you guys just saw. Lots of white tail, lots of black tail, lots of black bear. And if you go over here to Balmont Lake, there is going to be a lot of black tail, white tail, moose and bear and rabbits even more than what we just saw. So that's actually going to be our next destination. I was going to head up this way, but I think it's actually going to be a better bet to go over here and see if we can get some of the blacktail. 
So now that we have earned a little bit of weapon score, let's go ahead and purchase some 243 polymer tip bullets. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase 40 of those and then unequip the soft points and equip the polymer tips. And already we got some black tail deer down here and they're in a pretty good spot. Now, this lake usually is absolutely covered with black tail deer, so I'm pretty excited to see what we have on the opposite side of it. We've already got a couple bucks right here. And in fact, let's see if we can hit a long range shot. Now, normally I would not recommend doing this with the starter scope on the 243, but I think we can hit this shot, so let's go ahead and aim slightly high. And that should be good. And the hunting pressure just appeared, which will show us that he is dead. And if you look on the map, you can kind of see where he was uh, when you last saw him, as long as you've spotted the animal. So before you kill it, make sure you spot it. It will help quite a bit with finding them when you're first starting out, because a lot of times this previously spotted icon will be wherever the animal was last seen by you. So if he ran off a little bit, it'll kind of be where the spotting outline disappeared. So. It's very useful for finding your trophies, even later in the game, once you've kind of already learned everything. Another thing I probably should mention for anybody that is brand new to the game, whenever you pick up a track, there will be this little cone that kind of points in the direction where the next track should be, or in this case, it's pointing right to where our deer is because the deer is the next track. It didn't have time to leave another one, but the cone will indicate the direction that the deer is running, which can be very useful when trying to track down wounded trophies. And that is a left lung, liver, and stomach hit. As you can see, the polymer tip bullets are just so much better. The penetration is miles better than the soft points, so you do want to get it as quickly as possible because it will greatly improve your success rate. We actually have a pretty good black tail deer out there. It looks to be one of the mid-size level fours. Definitely going to be something we take down though. But before we take that buck out, there is something that I want to go over real quickly. This video is getting a little bit long, so it's probably gonna be the last thing that we actually go over. But I figured this is something that we need to touch on in episode one because it actually is pretty important to your success in the Hunter Call of the Wild. And that is need zones. These are going to be where your animals spend the entirety of their day for the most part. The only time they won't be at the need zones is during the time that they're traveling from one zone to another. So for example, this is a drink zone for black tailed deer. This is where they're going to go to drink. Now each species has a different time of day that they go to each zone. The drinking, the feeding, and the resting zones, uh, they're all going to have different times based off of the species. And so there is a lot of different very helpful spreadsheets and steam pages and stuff like that that list every single drinking, feeding, and resting time for every animal. So I highly recommend using those to your advantage as much as you possibly can. It's going to help you a ton with finding animals. And one of the biggest things that I would recommend is to always hunt the drink zones because that's going to make the animals the easiest to find because a lot of times when it comes to feeding or resting zones, they're just in areas that are really hard to hunt, whether it be like brushy areas or just areas that are really far away from other animals. So drink zones are going to be the areas where you find the most. Like for example, you see we have three blacktail right there and then we also have two drinking there. Uh, we had some drinking across here and then I also found a couple over here but I wasn't able to get their zone. And it just really makes it so you can see a lot of animals of whatever species you might be hunting. And with the recent changes to Layton, you'll find a lot of animals feeding near water too. So it just makes it so you'll find so many more animals and it'll greatly increase your success rate. But now that we've kind of touched on that, let's get a little bit closer and try to take out this level 4 black tail because this is the biggest thing that we've seen as of now. So we're close enough now that we can probably take a shot on this guy, but because he's behind the brush, what we're going to need to do is use the spotting outline to kind of help our aim. So basically what I mean by that is we're going to spot this animal right as it starts to lift its head up. And then we're going to switch to our gun and try to shoot as fast as possible so that we don't lose sight of the spotting outline just like this and that might have been slightly high but you guys get the idea that's one of the easiest ways to get a buck down that is stuck in the brush uh, it can take a little bit of practice to master but it will help quite a bit with those deer that just don't want to come out of the brush 
And the reason that we waited for him to lift his head up is because when they're drinking, their shoulders actually kind of scrunch backwards a little bit. And it makes it so sometimes you'll end up not penetrating deep enough to get the lungs because you might end up hitting the shoulder blade, which will kind of slow the bullet down and just make it so you don't get nearly the penetration that you would if you hit behind the crease in the shoulder. So that's the main reason why we try to wait until they lift their head up. And sometimes it can be hard to time, but uh, with practice, it'll become relatively easy and routine and eventually it'll just be second nature to wait until they lift their head up and aim for the crease in the shoulder. And our buck really didn't run that far. It's a decent blacktail deer. Uh, this is one of the bigger sets of antlers. It's uh, not going to be a diamond, but it is going to be a pretty decent gold at 145. And for some reason, this rack right here actually does have a bit of a uh, glitch with the scoring on it. It says it has 4.41 overall spread, but it definitely should be much higher because the inner spread or uh, overall spread is basically the point that has the most spread between one antler to the other. So for this, it'd be right here to here. And that's definitely more than 4.41. I believe it should score around like 20 something for that. So this buck really should be like a 165 buck, but for some reason it's bugged. But I mean, it is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. And that will give us another level and our very first perk point. And I think that's a good place to end it. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to purchase the, the muscle memory perk, which is in the rifle perks. This will make it so that we don't have to leave aim mode in order to rack the bolt in our rifle, which is uh, gonna be very helpful. And so basically what that means is whenever we shoot, It'll just automatically rack another shell into the chamber without having to leave scoped mode, which is going to be very helpful. But I think we're going to go ahead and call it there. I hope this has been helpful for you guys so far. We're only one episode in. Got plenty more to go, but I really hope you guys enjoyed and I really hope it was helpful. If there's any suggestions for episode two of this series, let me know down below because there's a lot of different things that you could do early on in the game. Let me know what you guys would like to see the most, whether it's like goose hunting or or Silver Ridge Peaks hunting because those are both great ways to earn money, money and XP early on. So let me know what you guys want to see. And yeah, with that being said, if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and ring that notification bell so that you guys will never miss any new uploads or live streams. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below, like I was saying, with what you guys want to see out of episode two. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace!